Welcome to the second episode of The Bill Black Show. The first one in English, of course. My guest today is Andriana Shabbat. Not Shabot, Shabbat, as I quickly learned in the episode. Andriana is a musician and actress living in Burlington, Vermont, in the heart of Bernie Land. Uh, and I ask her all about that, of course. We discuss plenty of stuff from gaming to musicals to politics and life at, as well as after Bishop's University, where we both studied. So I think that pretty much covers it for now. I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with Andriana Shabbat. Are you a gamer? I, I am, actually. Yeah. What do, you, what, what do you game? Oh, that's a good question. Well... I've been in transition. Uh, I don't have a PS3 anymore, which is, or sorry, PS4 anymore, which is sad, sad, saving up for a PS5. Nice. But I used to play a lot of Overwatch, um, mm. Among Us, uh, Bioshock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's that other zombie one? Uh, I mean, Resident Evil, but. Uh, yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of that? Did you play Resident oh. Evil 4 when it came no. out? No. I don't think Ooh, so. I, well, because that because it's just that's clearly the Resident Evil game that really marked my uh, a, part, a period of my life. Like it was Resident Evil Four on GameCube came out in the summer of '05, and mm. my guy friends and I we just spent that fucking summer in a basement. Multiplayer? Like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. even, it's not even no. really multiplayer. No, we oh. were just we. It was like old school. Uh, a bunch of people around one brave player, uh, <laughs> and we were all. And and you know what's funny? Like. Uh, we figured out late into the game that you could run. <laughs> we we were only walking it, so that's why we were freaking the fuck out. Because oh no, it was like we were getting our asses kicked, or, or the one ass while the other ass. Y'all skip the watching. Yeah, y'all skip the intro or something like what? Well, it's usually a little mini tutorial. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Well, I think we must have skipped the tutorial, or we skipped <laughs> that part. So, but but honestly, I was kind of disappointed <laughs> to learn that we could ran, that we could run because it, what added to the to this to the horror of it was that you were you were like stuck in fear, oh, slowly damn. backing away, trying to. But anyway, now you guys are professionals at it. That's right. No, I you know like it's funny like I, I do find gaming interesting because it's like a great example of like. Um, you know, maybe something that in the past, we, you know, people could have been like, oh, you know, stop, stop gaming. It'll never lead to anything. But like some people truly did <laughs> make it lead to, to amazing careers and amazing, yeah. uh, you know, was that ever Twitch there? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was that ever uh, anything like how seriously did you, did you take gaming? Oh, um, well, I mean, I, I was a PC gamer back in the day, like most people of my age. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, like just yep. that that happened in our family until like super late. Like PS1 came out and everybody was a buzz about it. And our family was just like, click, 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 arrow keys. And when you say family, do you mean the parents as well? Uh, well, kind of, sort of. Like my father had his own little niche set of games. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Because um, my dad, but, you know, my, yeah. I was gonna say like, because my dad views gaming as like, I think he still views it as like this. Oh wow, like the the technology of these, like I'm, <laughs> you know I mean, like even back yeah. in the day, yeah, yeah. But if your your dad seemed to be gaming as well, yeah, he was kind of like a, a Doom guy um, nice. slash mice man, kind of like puzzle games as well, like Mist. Um, oh my God, Mist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mist. I'd love to try Mist again. It's because I was it's way too young. Actually. Yeah. Did they, um, and yeah, did they update the sequels it? are amazing. Yeah, the sequels are, are really great. Uh, I believe it's called Riven. And mm. there is a new new mist out. Um, and it's it's still like click and point, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. So it like makes up for that. Yeah, like you can just get lost in in just like the 3D kind of 360 kind of absolutely. World. And it was yeah gorgeous back in the day like back in the late 90s right. unless that's my childhood memories that are embellishing it but i'm pretty sure it was pretty gorgeous yeah it was that's yeah, good yeah. That okay was good. and by the way I, I would be remiss to not because i still once in a while i the one game i do play is diablo 3 now were you ever oh. a diablo girl um i i have i have a tr i have trouble with like third person-y clicky stuff i don't know i, oh, really? I just can't i can't do it <laughs> well and it's actually diablo is weird because it's like overhead right right you need first person yeah. 
Yeah, I do. You need to be in the zone. I need to be right immersed, in there. steeped. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I just mentioned that Diablo because because I'm pretty sure Overwatch is the same company, right? It's like it's like Blizzard, is it not? Oh, is it? I think so. I might be mistaken. Oh, wow. I thought Overwatch evolved. was by Blizzard. It is Anyways. by Blizzard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it. Diablo so, was. Yeah. Well, Blizzard, Blizzard had uh, StarCraft. Did you ever play that? I I watched it. Yeah. I never really played it. That was <laughs> that's some that's some nerd shit. Like it's <laughs> it's fucking strategy. Anyway, StarCraft, yeah. Warcraft, and and then Diablo. But I was always more of a Diablo guy. But nice. um, yeah. Hey. So unless you know, I know we just got into it, but I, I think uh, we should probably introduce you. Uh, would oh. you like to introduce yourself to the listeners? Sure. Uh, my name is Andriana. Uh, Andriana Chabot. I am a musician slash actor slash human slash she her i suppose yes of course, of course. <laughs> and you so you truly say it shabbat right shabbat yeah it's okay. actually funny enough it's it's not chabot like the french mm. version it is chabot um chabot czechoslovakian oh wow so it's it, there's yeah. no french no french i'm shocked because <laughs> you're in vermont right i am in vermont right now yeah. and the name is so you're saying it's from it's from it's Czechoslovakian, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. My dad is Czechoslovakian. Right. Okay. So mm-hmm. there's truly no link at all with with. This is just like, blow, like blowing my brain up because <laughs> I was just imagining that your ancestors were from, uh, from like, essentially New France and would have yeah. been part of the people that because like there was like a huge exodus, right? Is it, the the right. reason why this yeah there's so many French last names in New England is because of that exodus. So you're but you're saying your your ancestors were not part of that. Yep, super, super boring white European. Um, oh, yeah, I mean... So it's... I suppose the story isn't, like, the worst. I mean, they got, you know, driven out to another country uh, by the Nazis, and then they eventually were able to go to Canada. And then That's... now we're chilling in Vermont. Now you're chilling in Vermont. Yeah, yeah it's weird to think this... I mean, so they, so they escaped the Nazis. Yeah. Now when my is... dad was, like, super little. Now, wow. I mean, how... I would imagine that'd be like a, a big part of your family history. You know, that's like, it's often talked about and it's sort of like almost like a part of you. Would you say that that's the case? Um, I get a little bit, uh, I get a little bit attached to some stories. Um, especially since my mother is also Ukrainian, she's not directly from Ukraine, but my grandparents are. So I do have this like rich cultural kind of heritage kind of in my blood. Um, yeah. So when I hear about, you know, like, um holocaust deniers for example uh i get a little bit i get yeah. a little bit um perturbed there uh, yeah. especially since you know it wasn't just the jews it was a whole slew of people polish czech um ukrainian yeah now on the flip side have you gotten the sort of like um you know you have it so easy now compared to us back in the day or, or my you know what i mean like do, oh the sort of guilt of being raised in the late 20th century or early 21st century has, has that happened? Yeah. I mean, there is the, I, we grew up technically like Roman Catholic slash Catholic. Uh, so there, there was that instilling of a little bit of guilt with that. And, and I mean, I couldn't respect the older generation to a certain degree because things have gotten better. Um, yeah. but it's not like I don't empathize. So, uh, or, you know, understand. <laughs> so if it's a little bit too much, then it's too much. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Um, you know, if, if there's certain like uh, ageism imposed on me or, um, you know, you, you'll never understand because you never grew up in the time, oh, then it's like, question. all right, right, like speak your piece, speak Fair your enough. story, please share what you have to say. Fair enough. Um, I will absolutely listen and respect it, but I mean, just yeah. to kind of submit me to something lower because I have not experienced that is a little bit offensive. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, and by the way, this, because I, I think it was why I was a bit confused is that this is the first time I've heard of ageism going towards the younger generation. When I, when I hear ageism, I always assume it's like being shitty towards the older generation. Oh, like, okay, but, boomer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do you feel about okay, boomer? Um, <laughs> 
I mean, I think it was cathartic at the time to hear that, you know, like, especially when there are such like these, these strong, strong old school voices that are happening right now that are just very connected to old ways. And like, no, I can't change at 50 my career path. I can't, you know, stop um, my gas com consumption, my energy consumption. Um, there's a lot of that. Uh, a lot, a lot of boomers aren't really that either there some some of them are hippies so that's true that's true yeah, yeah. do you so is that a a uh, frequent uh, force in your life of uh, do you get a do you, do you have a daily barrage of boomer <laughs> toxicity <laughs> um funny enough vermont is totally not like that we've got a bunch of retired hippies here so well you guys are the land of bernie yeah. sanders right yeah yeah so that's 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 very cool so well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is something I was going to lead up to, but I'm glad we're, we're in it. So is like, what's it like to be in the land of Bernie Sanders, essentially, is my question. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you know sure. I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's cool because he's like literally a local um, and he's got a, a lot of really cool. Um, I mean, it's it's funny how in America, they lump it into the term as socialist and socialist has weird connotations here, um, especially when you're getting to, you know, people who are, you know, like super into Trump, for example. Um, but the mentality is is fairly on the same vein as a lot of Canadians. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm lucky to be here and to kind of be in this like little mini New England bubble, uh, not yeah. just Vermont, I guess, um, that has a voice who is outspoken, who actually did a lot for, for Burlington back in the day as mayor um, to kind of like just make it better and and also speak his mind and listen yeah. to people. That, that was a big thing as well. Um, he listened to a lot of local people, which was great. Hmm. In regards to specific issues that were happening in in Vermont or Berlin? Yes, specifically. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. assuming this is probably uh, all leading to an even bigger heartbreak when he didn't get the nomination twice, right? And like, and because even I felt, well, even I, I mean, we're not that far away. I felt the the heartbreak of, of not having him as a potential candidate for president. Yeah. I mean, sure. It, I was, for some reason, the second time around, I, I had this feeling that America was this almost this battered woman um, that kept crawling back to the same people just for consistency. That's totally. Um, <laughs> so, so I was like, I was even at the rally um, that he was that he was at, and I just had this weird feeling that it was like, if it's not him then it'll happen soon. But for some reason, I feel as though that now is not the time. Yeah. Like, we don't deserve this for some reason. We haven't talked about it enough. We haven't, we haven't done something as a human species in this country to, like, care for one another enough to mm. be on the same level in a weird way. Um, mm. And I'm not sure where that is, being a Canadian because I, I did get here like you know at age 13 um but yeah i i had right. a, a strange feeling about it even before it even happened uh what specifically sorry um i don't know i it didn't happen the first time for a reason right 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 right, right. and it just seemed like texas was this big massive blob that like i have so many friends there that are very very liberal yeah. But I knew that, you know, the electoral electoral college was just like not <laughs> so wait, gonna are you, allow it. Are you saying that in 2016, uh, did you have a, have a feeling that Trump was going to win? Um, no, that actually okay. was quite a shock. Yeah. Okay. But me too. The, yeah. that actually woke up woke me up to like, oh wait, there's a lot of For people sure. who have differing opinions Absolutely. on their neighbors. Yeah. 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 Have you watched uh, Fahrenheit 11.9? Oh, way back in the day. 
Oh, I don't. I, I don't know if we're talking the same thing though, because because there's four, Fahrenheit uh, four fifty one, which is like the book. Oh, right? the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's <laughs> and Wait, then the there's, Michael Moore one. That's right. But so Michael Moore did okay. he did Fahrenheit nine uh, eleven, I think. Okay. In two thousand four, about nine uh, eleven, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then he and then in twenty eighteen he released he released a documentary called Fahrenheit uh, Fahrenheit eleven nine, which is about oh. Trump. It's like on the ni- on the ninth of oh, November. Gosh. And it's about, it's about Trump's election. And it's, I love that documentary. It's like, it just, it's funny. And it just, it just really shows how Trump really was elected. Um, Dang. Yeah. Cause yeah, a lot of people got, yeah, you're right. Like it, it really showed uh, that a lot of us on the left were, uh, were kind of blind to a certain reality that was happening yeah. um, that we weren't really seeing. But anyways, and I was also wondering if like in, uh, again, in, in Vermont, is there also like the opposite of like if people that are very right wing just because, you know what I mean? Like, because it's such a left wing uh, state, I'm assuming it is. There absolutely is. And Trump kind of gave a voice to those people as well um, to kind of come out. Uh, though at the same time, I mean, you have to get to certain towns to see it, yeah. but they all have amalgamated to those certain towns. Um, yeah. Very, very, uh, you know, kind of like self-reliant people who don't need anyone who, you know, yeah. like are very, very proud of their independence, which is awesome. And like mm-hmm. wonderful to like, think of yourself as like, you know, cabin in the woods kind of person, like shooting your own meat like that is so cool that is like that is such ultimate freedom and i love that that concept um but at the same time you just gotta like treat your neighbor in the same regard as yeah exactly you'd want to be treated um but yeah i've seen a few like trump trucks with the flags and it's a little yeah now there's not many but are those the same people because we have uh we we've gotten our are the the conspiracy people that you know have mm-hmm. they had their you know they had uh, what's it called I was gonna say uh, manifestation which is not manifestation <laughs> but I, I forget the translation but delusions? like uh, dem- more like demonstrations but yes oh, perhaps delusions so okay. would you say it's the same crowd or absolutely yeah. I mean I've I've seen I have relatives of relatives who uh, have fallen into like the ultra conservative type of paranoia slash. Oh wow! Um, yeah, no, like I, I, I am aware of them, but it's always yeah. a few over, so I can't, you know, talk to them or, you know, yeah. like have a chat about their, you know, yeah. delusions or, or theories. <laughs> now, were they already pretty much on the right, or was this like complete total switch? You know what I mean? Um. Oh, like the relatives of relatives. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I think I I grew up with it without really knowing. Mm. Um, and then more and more I was able to like understand why my parents were actually the liberal ones <laughs> even though I thought they were super old school yeah um, you know like I was like oh okay well yeah Bernie yeah. Sanders it is then <laughs> that's right that's right yeah so and you mentioned you're so you're, you're actually basically Canadian right you were yeah. born in Canada yes I was born in to- Ontario Oh, mm-hmm. so now how is like, does that, um, is, is that like an identity crisis for you or, you know what I mean? How does that feed into you? Well, I mean, it was certainly culture shock when I got here, even to Vermont, which is the most Canadian you can yeah, get, probably. Um, but people were very, especially since I moved right before 9-11 happened, um, people wow. were very, very intense about their gun rights. Um, very intense about their independence, um, and it w- it like definitely seeped through to the kids because that's where I was hearing it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, gun violence in schools. Even though Vermont is very very safe, you know, you'd hear it on the news, and it was like, oh, no big deal. You know, it yeah. was it was a different view for sure. Um, I was known as the Canadian for quite some time. Um, always polite, always, you know, like saying sorry. Uh, <laughs> so that was like kind of cute. I mean, yeah. it was like a thing that I could, I don't know, talk yeah. to people about or something. Um, yeah. But it definitely made me the other. That's for sure. 
Um, yeah. I was definitely the other here. Uh, and now do you, th- do you feel like you're, you've truly established yourself as like a local or, you know what I mean? I think a little bit, though I did go to, I go, I went back to, I went back to college um, at Bishops for a yep. little bit. So it was like a return to Canada in a certain Oh, way. so when you, so when um, you went to Bishops, it was actually a, a sort of like a return to Canada. Yeah. I did not know that. I truly yeah. assumed, this is my assumption of you, is mm-hmm. I assumed you were fully uh, a Vermontian, I guess. Oh. And you were Vermonter. like, I'm, Vermonter, that makes more yeah. sense. <laughs> and uh, that you were like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go study, uh, I'm gonna go study in a liberal arts college. It's gonna be, I'm assuming, much less expensive. I don't know how, if it's much less expensive. Yes, is it? and it is? since I was an Ontario person, it was even less expensive. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's kind of a so, no-brainer, yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. But yeah, yeah, I just assumed that it was, to you, you were entering Canada uh, fresh, but it was oh. actually a bit of a, had you ever been to Quebec mm-hmm. before? Was it your um, first time? For like a few field trips. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing serious, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, Bishops has quite an Englishized it bubble. So completely does. That's, I think, yeah. one of the biggest misconceptions uh, perhaps that people, especially like international students might have is that like, oh, I'm going to totally, I'm going to go to Bishops and be to- immersed in a French environment. Like, no, no, honey, that's not. I have a question for you, actually. Go for, it. Go for it. Okay, so I've I noticed this on the phone. A, a francophone called me the other day, and I was, and she was like, okay with her English, and I was like, tu pourrais me parler en français, je peux le comprendre. Wow. Like fairly well, you know, like I can understand more okay. than I can say it fluently. Um, and she was like, why? Is is my English not good enough? And I was like, what? No, 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 don't take offense to that. I'm just saying if it's like easy. And I felt as though when I was in Sherbrooke, the second I'd start to like converse and like practice, it was instant English. Oh, you are an Anglophone, switch. And I was like, no, I, I want practice. I want to be yeah. like you. <laughs> yeah, I know that is that. Yeah, that happens. Now, That's now good. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I'd like to think that, um, if I, that if, like, let's say if I hear an Anglophone ch- try to speak French, like, yeah. I usually try, I try to, I'll meet them halfway and, and I, like, I, I'll, in, I'll entertain your French conversation because I know, because okay. that's, because that's the reason why you're bringing it up, right? Okay. But yeah. my yeah. point is that uh, I think that that woman on the, on the phone was kind of, was probably dealing with some stuff in her personal life that was making her sad and angry. Like, Probably. I don't think any, I don't think that's an average Quebec, Quebecer reaction. Oh, okay. If, it, was that, your, okay. was that your concern? Well, I was just, I was wondering if there was like this pride that like, no, I, I want to speak to you in English because I know it. And right. Um, you don't need to like talk down to me, you know, with, with French that you just learned, you know, in high school, you know, two years right. ago. Like, right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I think like that, those issues kind of come up perhaps like more in the older generations, you know, and oh, okay. that it kind of it goes both ways. Like, you know, I, like I'll give an example. Recently, I like there's a guy I know in Quebec around where I live and, and we both went to English high school, right? Yeah. So when we see each other, we speak in English, but like for, for where we live in, the, in this area, it's, it's very French speaking. Mm-hmm. So we were speaking English outside and then this older gentleman was like, like why why are you guys speaking in english and 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 you know it, a lot of thoughts got went to my head cuz it's like cuz this guy's a bit older he's his reality is more of of a um french english divide where like there's more shades of the the english businessman who's sort mm-hmm. of like oppressing the french uh, workers you know which is not my reality at all and and i and i really yeah. tried to approach it sort of like well you know, we both went to English high school and that's just how we go. And, and he, and I think it was like a nice conversation. He was kind of like, well, yeah, well, he, he, he did like, I was expecting him to get more defensive and more angry. And, but he was kind of like, yeah, it's just a reality that I'm not used to yet. And it's like, well, reality changes, my friend. Yes. You know, it's the same, the same thing with Continue. like, uh, that's right. Like I, I worked in a, in a theater uh, last year and we, the theater had, it was like a new theater, right. And it has mm. gender less bathrooms. Nice. And uh, yeah, and and there's this older gentleman, gentleman who is literally, I love it. He was like, he was like, hey, where's where are the bathrooms? And I'm like, they're here. He's like, he does like he was super confused. I'm like, yeah, they're genderless. He's like, he was like, um, well, I, yeah, what do you say? He was like, I don't like it, but 
like it's like I don't have to I don't have to like it but I'll accept it you know what I mean and I was like you know what that works like that's okay. all that we're asking of you sir you don't have to like it but this is the new reality now and I think you have to you'll have to accept it oh dear are there well. genderless bathrooms in your work um no actually not yet not at my work but there are in the local park the new park got redone um the berlin and park um nice. Burlington Park there and uh yeah they're actually quite modern and and you can actually even see tops of people's heads and like <laughs> it's like outdoors it's like right I'm like wow okay yeah. okay we're moving well, right along <laughs> yeah well it, it does kind of bring the question like why didn't we just have stalls all along before you know what I mean like I don't know yeah and I have no clue yeah I don't know it's and like because the idea Perhaps, behind it is go for it is, is it the whole idea of like the ladies powder their noses and sit down and take a moment and is, is that where it it came from perhaps you because mean, i like the ladies room was like decked out in curtains right and, like, tufts and like this is you're, you're talking like 19th century right yeah oh yeah 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 right and like even in, even in the 40s i think they were still yeah. kind of like that right yeah so because the guys is just like a bunch of a bunch of ur or urinals like right you know what i mean whatever which is probably <laughs> it's simpler for for when you got to go number one but i don't know like i because because the idea behind just having like genderless bathrooms is essentially to make somebody that's non-binary uh feel less i guess torn or i guess yeah. confused or that's right. the idea I'm assuming. yeah yeah i think so if yeah. that makes sense yeah. You know? And whatever you identify as um, yeah. doesn't matter. You know, like it's, we all pee. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, got to exactly. take a dump. It's all yeah. Good. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. Like, and like, if you really phrase it as like, if it can make somebody that typically has felt oppressed and, or, you know, disregarded to make them feel a, just a little bit more included, right. that probably is a good fucking thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Are, are these, oh, here's a quick question for you. Uh, how heavily do you engage in uh, what what is what one might call SJW behavior slash identity? <laughs> and I don't mean that like in a as a as a dig or an insult. Wait, SJW or identity? Well, do you well, know what SJW means? No, no, apparently not. Oh wow, I can't believe I'm I'm teaching you something today. Social okay. social justice warrior. Oh 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 that that kind <laughs> of stuff. That kind of stuff is super popular here. Um, I have, it, it's actually praised and like encouraged, which yeah. is such a old hippie Vermonter Ben and Jerry's kind of mentality that is just like everywhere here. Um, right. And at a, at a certain point, it kind of gets undermined because it's like, sometimes it's like too much and it gets a little showy yeah. um, and it gets taken less seriously. Um, yeah. But the flip side to that, um, for me personally, I, I always have this strange attachment to the fact that I am an immigrant, mm. so I don't participate very heavily. I, mm. I will sit down with you and have a wonderful discussion about, you know, how I do not believe in the fact that we voted in a uh, media star for a president. <laughs> Uh, I can, and that's the best way to like that's the, <laughs> probably the best compliment he he like appreciate that right, so, love right. It. the most polite um way of saying it but like i i still feel as though since i just applied for citizenship since i am on a green card if i get one jerk who like pulls me over or something or or like sees you know a rant um, that I might have posted on YouTube or something stupid like that, you know, like I, I still feel, I still feel like the other in specific ways like that. Like, mm. I don't, I don't have the drive to, you know, like join the Black Lives Matter movement on Church Street, just because I'm like, it's happening. Yeah. That's awesome. I will post on Facebook and post on social media as much as I want, but it's 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 a little bit more tricky for me to feel secure and okay um being part of that which is yeah well are you also kind of implying uh the idea of like pick your battles yeah i think so too yeah yeah, yeah um and yeah. and not that i don't think 
uh, Black Lives Matter, Matter <laughs> is not a battle um, because it is. It's it's definitely a battle worth fighting for, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I've I've been observing Canada within this whole Black Lives Matter movement, and it's a little hairy in different ways. For sure. Yeah. Um, it's it's a strange like almost not talked about as much as it should be yeah is that yeah. correct uh yeah god this is i mean i there's like, like my, racism denial there's like more oh, racism denial yes that's Canada, true right? okay. okay so one thing i could say is i'm trying to remember if trudeau said that i think trudeau said that uh, systemic racism exists i think Trudeau, our prime minister, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. that was yeah, insulting. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> that was fine. Uh, but uh, but like the our Quebec premier Le Legault has has been um, very much tiptoeing around it, and like yeah, it, that's just the age old kind of like Quebec has a bit of a different take on stuff, and it's just you could probably you could probably define Quebec as uh, more racist than than other provinces for sure it's just yeah. they, it's just they see it differently like there's this secularism law and, and it's just i don't know there's a lot of it's complicated but i mean yeah it, it's definitely an issue in in canada as well um mm -hmm. yeah i i don't know it's yeah I, I i'd like to think it's slowly getting better but um you know it's also with our the the problems with indigenous communities and i think it's it's just like oh most of, definitely absolutely you know oh, it, it's really it's just step by step trying to to mend those uh, those bridges but but yeah i guess my question was more like um yeah. so 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 you wouldn't say that you're cuz you know even quickly judging from your profile you know what i mean you you think like artist actress musician you you could assume that you might be very very involved in uh in activist sort of things like that but you're saying that you kind of feel a little uncomfortable you know what i mean putting up something a that, little bit yeah i get that yeah and and it's just it's also since i do want dual citizenship and mm. and i do want to and i and i truly believe especially living in in vermont here that my opinion will be heard whether yeah. i'm there or not so right. it's it's a it's not really an apathetic sort of thing or like yeah. a, a I'm not involved kind of thing because yeah. I'm not like scared or like it's just an apprehension slash it's there yeah. and it's it's vocalized and it's For being sure. demonstrated and I have no doubt in my mind that that's happening so yep I get yeah. it and I know for sure like at least on my end I definitely would want to avoid being the type of person that's like constantly um shouting from the rooftops and i don't know it feels like that type of person it's like it's you're putting on too much of a show and at one mm. point you I mean it becomes less about the actual issues and more about like just wanting to shout and i don't know i'm always like super like mm -hmm. on edge towards those people but again like i, I do think yeah like the idea of yeah. like picking your battles seems like it makes uh it makes a lot of sense for sure um no, so you studied, so we're similar in the fact that we both studied drama, right? Yes. Yeah, now you did true. double major music and drama. I tried. <laughs> you started off like that. I started off like that, but then I, during my fifth year, it was not going as planned. And I was like, you know what? I really want to enrich my life. I'm at a liberal arts college. I don't want to be like pinned down to anything anyways. I know about music. I know I, I know this stuff. Like I I am here. I want to enrich myself with, you know, taking some philosophy courses or mm. like a pop culture class or like an extra yeah. playwriting class. Why the heck yeah. not? You know, I, I didn't want to be just like a slave to what I first intended when I started. Right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and also I gotta mention like uh, fifth year. I know that by the Victory end of my lap. third year What's that? Victory lap. <laughs> Victory fucking lap. I know by the end of my third year, I was like, all right, the, you know what I mean? I was, I was ready to go. And I, I was that tough for you or? Um, I still, I, I was, I was definitely seeing the end very, very, yeah, at the third year, that's actually a good year to, yeah. Third year was definitely one of those turning points where I'm like, okay, I'm, 
the older ones yeah, here. Yeah. I, I don't feel, you know, like shy yeah. around the older people or apprehensive about the older people. All right, right. let's freaking do this. But I also at the same time knew that life after college would not bring me the consistent type of opportunities that I'd get in a college. That's true. So I was like, I'm going to suck the marrow out of life right now. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I remember, like, I do remember thinking to myself constantly, like, uh, like this is not going to last. And this sort of, like, easy life, well, easy. I mean, it's, it was easy for me at the time to, you know, go to class and productions. And it was, like, such a, that was, like, I wish I could have like done that forever in a way, but you know what I mean? Like, except mine is the sort of like Bishop's bubble part of it. Right. Um, but yeah, it like was post university life difficult for you. Cause I know for a lot of people, including myself, that uh, those like first, maybe like first year, that first year or first two years were fucking rough. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. I think not that, not that theater is, can like all theaters are clicky but there is this reliance on the people who come back year after year like yeah. it's you want to work with the people who you know who you love who you work well with like yeah. obviously you'll make a better production that way um so taking a chance on someone who's a fresh face is always difficult so for me not living in a big city um like you know montreal or or toronto or new york um and living in cold little Vermont and needing to pay back loans. Yeah. My priority was definitely not like auditioning every week. There, there was nothing to audition for yeah. here every yeah. week, you know, it, yeah. it just doesn't exist. Um, yeah. So getting into that, those, those little clicks or those like niches, those community theaters took a little bit longer. Yeah. You mean like, you mean like after university, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. I had a period of like of. I don't know if it was like depression, but it was f pretty close to that. Where it's like, okay, you go from an environment where you're so sort of like stimulated, and then back home. Yeah. And I was like not working with somewhere I liked. You know what I mean? Like not taking care of my body. Yeah. Rough, but you know. Yeah. But so now, so what would you just say that you're like? How what does your life look like these days uh, now? Uh, before or after the COVID. Uh, let's say with before COVID, let's remember the days. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Those were the days. Um, <laughs> yeah, before COVID, uh, I found a steady kind of like yearly cycle that I'd go through. Um, I knew that during the summer I would try out for, um, or either play in the pit for a certain theater company here for Stowe mm. Theater. Um, and then throughout the you know uh, winter spring the rest of the year um, I would hope for you know some other smaller theaters um, uh, there was a puppet theater that I tried out for that I got in that I had a blast doing nice. um, there is also lyric theater which is the main Burlington community theater here that um, puts on pretty high caliber kind of Broadway yeah, type yeah. shows yeah. Um, that I, I play in the pit for. So like, and there was also uh, gigging locally at venues yeah. with my songwriting and a jazz trio and, and things nice. like that. So I got into like the yearly cycle of like me setting things up for myself, being a boss lady, like marketing myself yeah. um, to the, the, the most like respectful, but not over, over, um, Cause you can go over the top with marketing, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's easy to do. Um, you go over the top. Y well, no, I don't. I try not <laughs> to, <laughs> but you know, appropriate for, you know, my state, uh, mm -hmm. appropriate for the city, appropriate to hand over to venue owners and be like, Hey, I'm a pretty good option. Right now. Why now? Is there a reason why you felt the need to, to go back home? Um, Mostly because of money um, and yeah. also because for the visa to continue, um, I'd have to be a resident here. And so it was kind of like a no brainer, like, oh, my parents um, are here. Yeah, I can like yeah, settle yeah. down, kind of get my feet in, in, in the sand and like experience life a little, what's sure. adulting, um, yeah. things like that before yeah. I can be like, 
perhaps another city, which yeah. never really happened. Um, well, yeah, now the, the, <laughs> the context is a little bit different, but For let's sure. assuming that, uh, that COVID ends tomorrow, which, mm. you know, I feel like I, if I cross <laughs> my fingers go. enough, it'll happen. Uh, yeah. What, like, how uh, sort of rooted do you feel? Like, do you, you got to feel like the world is your oyster, you can do anything, or do you feel like you've got a nice balance, like, like a nice balance here and that you're, that you're set? I always kind of want more. Um, yeah. There's definitely a thirst for like more gigs and more theater. Um, I feel as though it, it's a little ironic that COVID happened the way that it did because I, I got my first kind of big lead role in community theater. Yeah. Uh, I've always been like supporting, um, of course, starting as like ensemble and all that fun stuff, worked yeah. my way up, all that fun stuff. And um, the time that I get cast, it gets postponed for COVID. So I'm just like, I'm just like digging my teeth in concrete, just like waiting for the, the moment that a vaccine yeah. happens and that it's all safe to be like in a theater together maskless, which yeah. is blowing my mind, even that concept right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, like I've been, I've been, I was f essentially focusing on doing stand-up comedy uh, this year and it's been like stop and start. And like, you know, I, like I'd gotten go, I I'd gotten uh, going like in the summer a little bit, and then yeah. we hit uh, red zone, boom, all shut down, and now it's like right. it's always it's always been extended. We don't know when it's gonna come back, and it's like I'm still writing, but sometimes sometimes I'm just kind of like, am I writing comedy for nothing? You know what I mean? Like, is there is there mm. no? You know what I mean? Is this a fucking yeah. just a void for? For, Who's this uh, for? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that could be like, how has your, uh, how's your mental health been uh, affected by this whole thing? Well, the first time it was announced that we're going into lockdown mode um, in March there, I was definitely expecting it to last until forever. Like really? I did not expect that the end of summer things would start to open back up. Like I was not oh, expecting wow. that at all. So yeah. I mentally prepared myself for like after winter. Huh. I really was. I, I had to because I, I knew that my desire to like go out to a, a club and hear some music, you know, like was was like this this weekly thing that I needed to just like no expectations. Can't do it. Not going to do theater until a year. Not going to yeah. do. Nope. You're blowing my mind because you're reminding me of a feeling that I had. And it's when things first started opening up, I do remember thinking like, kind of like, are we sure? Like, is yeah. this feels pre-celebratory? Like, hold on a second. I don't know. Like, and yeah. I had completely forgotten that feeling. And, and you, like, to your point, the right now, everything's shutting back down. It's, and you could argue that we probably sh should have never opened up in the first place. Right. I mean, I don't know. For Vermont, it was a different story because there wasn't a lot of rebellion. There was, mm. uh, there's lots of open spaces here. Yeah. You can be safe in a mask walking down Church Street, which is like the main drag um, with shops and stuff. Um, and, and be okay. There's lots of outdoor space that isn't like crowded New York, like subways. Yeah. Like that's, that's super dangerous to yeah. me. Um, so I, I was like, I was like, okay, so it'll become a little bit safer, but when are indoor spaces ever going to be okay enough to like do a theatrical performance where there's like two love interests who like are supposed to make out? Like yeah, what, that's... like how are we going to represent this? Like, no, okay, you stand here. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's some, that's some 2025 shit. And I'm, I'm hoping not. Yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be 2020 two or 2021 or oh my god i mean but well, this vaccine thing is is more promising you know it's, it's funny when it, when it first came out i was kind of like nah this this means that it's going to be like you know this is like super early days it'll be out in, in five years but i think it right. somebody told me it's like it's pretty much good to go they just need to i think it's like one last part of the trial or something and then it's and then it's just it's essentially okay. good to go right so we might be out of the we might be out of this by next year by the end of next year, perhaps, or before. I don't know. I hope so. We'll see. Yeah. So, yeah. So, wait. So, so did you answer the question about being your mental health being affected? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I was just, I was, I was glad that I didn't raise my expectations early right. on. So, yeah. 
it was definitely still tough working from home suddenly. Yeah. Um, especially since I last minute, like literally, like I, I took a trip with my with my um, significant other at the time yeah. to New York to visit my brother, um, who's a, a, is a great guitarist and stuff. Um, and I was like, this is awesome. And all of us, like we were already hearing on the radio, oh, China and oh, Italy. Oh, oh, oh God, oh God. Yeah. And we were like staying at a hotel. And I remember having this weird feeling like, what if like it comes over here for real? Yeah. Like that would just, dist- and I was like walking down in, in New York, all these people, all these wow. bodies. And I was like, what if is, all of this had to stop? It, now was this uh, like in February or March? This was, it was like the first week of March. So okay. it was like right yeah. before. Yeah, so yeah. I basically got home. I, I came back to Vermont on the Monday, went to work and my my bosses were already like so this is actually a serious thing and yep. then i was just sitting there during the meeting like yep i just went to new york um oh. and they were like oh uh Quarantine her. <laughs> they were like all right so you can i guess you can finish out the day we're just gonna go talk <laughs> did just they actually talk about that yeah did they actually um, but you didn't have any symptoms right no, no, no. Um, but it's I just did have the idea. Yeah, the idea. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew that in a few days after I visited, my brother started having symptoms. Um, so I told them about that, and they were like, "Yeah, let's." Uh, the next day, they were like, "Yeah, let's pack it in." <laughs> oh wow! So it was wow, like wow, literally wow. right when I got in, they were yeah. like, "We've decided." <laughs> um, did he end up so, having it? Um, we think that he did. Yeah. It was never confirmed because it was right at the beginning where everybody was flooding to the doctors, and he was only if it, he was only able to see one via like telehealth mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah, and they were like, "It's probably COVID, but also we don't really have a lot of tests, so like, drink some water, take some Advil, yeah, rest, don't go to work, yeah, you know, things yeah. like that." Yeah, those first few days, man, were like so. I was in. Uh... I basically got to Toronto. I was like on the road for a, for a health Canada gig, like on the opioid crisis. And mm-hmm. I shit you not like in oh. February, there's one, st- cause we would go to high schools. Right. And we talk about the opioid crisis and one kid in February was like, what about the coronavirus? And we, we borderline were like, no, no, nothing about Stop. the coronavirus. Like it was <laughs> almost a punchline at that point. Yeah. And then I remember our- joking about that too. Yep. Yeah. 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 We were, there were jokes about it in January and shit like that. Yeah. It's, and um march like 13th i'll never forget it i remember did you do you, you listen to uh, joe rogan very occasionally when he uh, says <laughs> something he's a very c- offensive controver- you think well he likes pushing people's buttons yeah he likes being his own sensation his own he yeah. you know he, he's a little bit like trump where he says a lot of negative shit to like get a rise out of people well i've never Personally, okay, there's there's been a few occasions occasions where I've definitely like disagreed with what he had what he had to say. I mm-hmm. think it's I my take on him is that he he basically invites all kinds of guests and he you could argue that he gives certain people right. a platform that perhaps it's to to the detriment of society mm-hmm. uh, according to our perspective. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I mean that's the thing that I kind of don't like about him, but anyway. Um Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he had this guy on this, like this scientist talking about like infectious diseases, infectious diseases, oh, diseases, gosh. diseases, <laughs> uh, right as it was starting. And like this, it was like the fucking, it was like a movie. Like he was just, it was like the, this, the concerned scientist talk oh, about no. the coronavirus and like, everything. and I remember watching this on like March 12th or 13th. And then like, it's like the next day, Oh my God. Media shut down. And we're on the road and we had to drive. So we canceled the following school, the, the, the remaining schools we had. We drove all the way back from BC to Toronto and it was like an action movie. It was like just, we drove, oh like we didn't drive fast, but it was kind Wait, of why like- why did you go back? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, because you were touring with, with the yeah, opioid crisis. I was touring, I was touring with, uh, with somebody and we were already wow. on the road. So Wait, did you have to cancel a bunch of- yeah we can't we canceled like oh the maybe like we had like two or three schools on, on the road and here's yeah. an interesting thing we actually had like one of the last schools we had was in a place called thompson manitoba which oh. i've never been but we were like reading all this shit about it it was like most dangerous city in canada 
Uh, it was way up north. You know what I mean? So I'm like so thankful that we didn't go to Thompson before. <laughs> Just as well. Because uh, the thing is, uh, my coworker actually had symptoms. So we went, she went into like a hospital to get, get checked. And I, we were feeling sweaty. Well, not, I wasn't like physically sweaty, but like the idea of having to quarantine. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the road, like it was, that how was. How does that even freaking work? I don't know how it would have worked. Like, honestly, because we would have had to like keep booking, Air, booking an Airbnb or something. And then it's like, is that Health Canada? I don't know. But thankfully oh she didn't, she didn't have COVID. Uh, we didn't go to Man to Thompson. We just drove straight to Toronto, but I'll never forget like arriving in Toronto being downtown and like it was like a ghost town or like it was like it was like an an apocalyptic sort of like you normally toronto like downtown toronto is gonna be like yeah um you know you could drive you could drive around the expressway wow no traffic what yeah it's a zombie movie it's a it was was, was a fucking zombie movie it was a zombie movie which you know, okay. but you know what's weird? I kind of liked it. <laughs> Don Valley Parkway was clear for once. What the? It was. It was. <laughs> I mean, I know it was scary and everything, and it was. But I kind of enjoyed that. I mean, the freedom, like the yeah, the, the less traffic and the kind of like exciting nature of it. Like there was something that I thought was kind of exciting. And you know what's interesting? Like maybe a couple of years ago, one of my best friends and I had this conversation, and we ended up talking about um, the feeling of unity that like the greatest generation had like world war ii you know what i mean like how everyone felt okay. so united against a common yeah. cause and i remember telling my friend a couple of years ago like we haven't had that in and we haven't had that in years and there's that aspect of it i i wish i wish was more present now like now we, we even this generation even ruined that we we ruined the potential for unity oh you know i mean i mean i know it's more well, I think- than that but well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I would agree with that completely. What do you mean? I think, I think, I think there was this weird. I mean, perhaps this is just the American perspective right now because we we have like huge heads, and I'll I'll say we because I have been here for a little bit, mm-hmm. but you know our our politics you know determine the world um, and are seeping to different countries for no real reason other than, you know we're. Yeah. That. Oh, Anyways, um, yeah. but I would say, I would say like even even though we do crack a lot of jokes and when when we disconnect from the internet and and go to sleep at night, I think there is, you know, like bonding with memes, bonding with stupid ass videos, bonding with mocking the the <laughs> just humans in general. Perhaps that's what we could bond on. You know, I I think just the the stupidity that that is is seen in in everyday life is just more apparent with this access of the internet and, and maybe right maybe that maybe? for sure wait so, so the, the thing you were disagreeing with is is uh, the idea that we're not we're not united today is that what you were disagreeing yeah with? just, okay, just like a moment where we can't um share and kind of reflect and, and agree upon something all at once yeah um yeah yeah no i and and the thing is like like you know, that's that idea of like, oh, during the World War II, everyone was so united. I mean, that's sure, maybe that was the feeling for uh, some people, but like, obviously, you know, it's not so black and white. I'm sure there was a lot of, not of that happening. You know I mean, I'm sure there was like a bunch of race, like so much racism <laughs> happening and sexism Probably. and for sure, like it's, that's an ideal that we sort of, some people can look up to. And I think you're right. I think uh, there surprisingly is, can be a lot of unity even today, even though, you know, the media and the, and the internet always, sometimes always tend to bring out the worst of each other, but it's like, you can find little nuggets yeah. of, of gold around. I think it's just more complicated because there's, there's so much more access to things. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Do you feel, do you often feel the headache of the headache of social media and media and information? Yeah. I mean, not as much as boomers probably. Interesting, because I don't know. My theory is the fact that, like, I, you know, I, I, like, started on forums and was able to deduct what's truth and what's not and what's, mm. you know, pretty early. And I've, I, I had been exposed to that pretty early and that, that immediate, oh, this is, this is right at my fingertips. This is right at my yeah. fingertips. Oh, it must be real. It must be real. You know, like, okay. that was kind of filtered out early. So Yeah. 
you're referring to the uh, boomer lady who immediately shares the article that vaccines cause autism and correct uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing i mean i guess i was referring more to like um you know as let's say for music right like let's say you're trying to promote your music and everything it's mm -hmm. like all of the sort of the uh, like i love gary v but you know who gary v is no <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> I, like, I almost feel like, oh, God, because it's like once you, you can go down like a Gary V rabbit hole and it kind of becomes a lot. But if, but yeah. I do think, okay, so I'll, I'll sum it up. He's basically a um, businessman turned social uh, media sort of personality slash, slash entrepreneur. He's, he's very much an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and he talks about like, uh, essentially how to create content and how to essentially make it as a, a, a person on the internet or on social media or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, a brand. And that Establishing sounds, your brand. Exactly. And that sounds yeah. super douchey, honestly, but he's very, what I like about him is that he constantly talks about like gratitude and kindness and yeah. empathy. And like he, he's a valuable voice, I think in, in the, like in hustle culture, he's, He's uh, a great voice in that realm because he brings out some some really interesting things. Anyway, the point is like all of his like he's got so much content out there himself, and he talks about like making content and everything. And sometimes I'm like, it's just it's just fucking it's like too much. Like it's mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I have I have trouble. Uh, I have like struggle with that. Now I was wondering if if that was a, a a reality for you as well. Yeah, well, I mean, again, growing up with it, and I, I mm. started um, pretty early with YouTube uh, yep. during college, actually. Um, nice. Had had one little mini viral video that no was way. featured on the Canadian front page. No um, way. What was the uh, what was the video? <laughs> it was my idea that this was before like any kind of Frozen or like the, those Disney movies. Um, but it it was called Snow the Snowman. Snow the Snowman. Um, yeah, and I basically uh, rapped, white girl rapped for a little bit of it, uh, and then sang a little cute little tune about a snowman. Um, it was kind of adorable, I guess. I, I suppose if I watched it. <laughs> how, many, how many views did it end up, get, end up getting? It was, it was, yeah, it was 400,000. Damn, that's, that's pretty good. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, and especially back in the day with YouTube yeah. there. Um, so it was weird. I was hoping for half a mil because, you know, that would like... Close. But, but I didn't. Um, yeah. But the thing with that was I realized, I was able to realize really early with my YouTube kind of vlogging community um, that the quality of success and what I'm putting out there um, doesn't always match up with what's popular and what's yeah. good to share. Yeah. Um, so I, I bet if I wasn't featured, I would be shared, you know, a little bit around perhaps reach like 2k yeah. if I'm lucky and then it would be, you know, put, put away and then yeah. probably be put to bed. But I, I realized pretty early on, especially since I got a lot of hate for this, um, because you, I was you got featured. hate for snow, the snowman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I got, it was, it was, it was terrible. It was, you know, it was in the, in the age where, a lot of trollers would just like go to what's ever featured and look, you suck. Oh, <laughs> wow. you know, like, or, or wow, what a fat bitch, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, like that kind of very basic language. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like, what, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is this worth the 400,000 views where most people don't comment? Most people won't remember me in five seconds. Like, what is quality? What is this? Is, is there a quality with viral videos? Um, you know, like what, what do I want, um, when I'm online, what kind of content do I want to provide right. to people? What's going to last, what's going to connect me to others, which was what I found out pretty early, what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of make establishing connections and interact with people on like a more interesting level than just you suck, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming that experience kind of put a dent on like on your, it kind of gave, it was like, um, how do I say, like a, a bit of a bitter pill to swallow or? It was in a certain sense, 
Yeah, but at the same time, there was a, there was one moment where um, I was walking to class and I went over the bridge at Bishop's yeah. Yeah. and um, my thumbnail was, I think, the thing that got people because I, I had my tongue out on a snowman head. Yeah. Um, so people were like, yeah, some 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 woman licking a snowman. How Wait, that? somebody on the bridge recognized you from the thumbnail. Yes. Well, they so basically, basically. I was to the level that people recognized that it was me in that thumbnail or me in the video. So as I was walking to school that morning, before even knowing that I was featured, there were some weird looks towards me. And I was like, what, what's, what's going wow. on? Like, this is weird. And I got to acting class and one of my friends came up to me and she was like all excited. And I was like, what's going on? She was like, Andriana, you got featured on the Canadian front page. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and she showed me and I was like, this is embarrassing because half this class doesn't know that I'm on YouTube. All right, great. Cool. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was cute. You know, yeah. like it, it wasn't anything extremely embarrassing. Um, but I did get some looks. Um, but again, the looks were specifically, oh my God, there's that girl. There was no approaching, you know, like that mm -hmm. video didn't make me approachable. That, that video didn't get me connections that I and wanted And that's what pursue. you kind of, right. And that's, and that's what you kind of, uh, you wish had gone down differently or that's some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something that was a little bit more, I don't know, substantial enough to be like, oh, yo, that's that girl that was in the video that I really liked. Yeah. Or, yo, let's talk about something in the video. Right. You know, it, it was it was none of that. Right. And now, did funny. you, because this is something I, I feel like I have kind of done. It's like, after that, did you try to, like, post something that kind of uh, opens the door for more conversation, and then that gets, like, so few so few views? <laughs> uh, kind of. I, I followed up with some, I don't know if you know the Vlog Brothers, Hank Green. Um, no. They're, they're kind of popular nerds on YouTube that started real, real like bare bones, like way back when. And the concept was they'd send each other one video um, a day and it got, it caught on. It was quick, short, very like, very typical YouTube kind of yeah. vlogging. Um, and they, they wanted to do like a, what would you consider is awesome with humans or whatever? And I submitted something for that and it got some views, but after that, everything kind of went downhill yeah. because everything that I was proposing that I had ideas for was either like a stupid song or like some kind of reading of a play. And yeah. it just like didn't fit in with the, the content that I had sure. before. So, right. sure. um, yeah. I didn't know that you, uh, I didn't know that you essentially were a YouTuber for a while. Is, I was. Would you, would you still call yourself a YouTuber or? Really. No, I've, yeah. I've deleted, I mean, oh, it's, it's defunct. It's, wait. I've deleted all of my videos. There's so only Snow, Snow the Snowman is not available? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so heartbroken. I was going to like post it on the, I was going to like make it a, put on the <laughs> description or thing. So you, sorry. But just remind, just maybe I didn't catch this. So, so well, yeah. why, why did you take it all off? Yeah, so the videos mostly were so targeted towards the community that was there at the beginning, the vlogging mm. community, um, that it became kind of like this inside joke kind of thing that wasn't, it wasn't meant for mainstream. It was very, it was very referency, very referency to other vlogs, very, very niche to yeah. the point where I was like, if I want a job and <laughs> someone doesn't get the context of what I'm doing, yeah. then they, their opinion of me might, you oh, know, I see so yeah. I just like wanted to like start fresh. I wanted to, you know, be back in Vermont and like do gigs and like start yeah. new and like those silly, stupid videos are not what I do now, you know, right. that kind of right, thing. Right, right. I get, I get, I get it. Yeah. Now um, I'm intrigued by this. So <laughs> the art of acting itself, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. first of all, now, now, I guess, yeah, you were, you had gotten a role last year. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I, cause it, cause I feel like I haven't really acted in, I mean, I did like, I was do, doing like acting classes and stuff since I graduation and things like that. Oh, nice. But yeah, which is, you know, it's something, it's like a, it's nice to work on something and it's also nice to like work on acting uh, through the lens of, more geared towards like film acting rather than than stage, which, which oh, is cool sweet. to explore. Yeah, 
but I haven't like I haven't been in a play in years, and uh, I was wondering if yeah like are do you miss how how badly do you miss uh, being on stage and like the art the art of collaboration and creating mm. and all that yeah I mean there's one thing to like book a venue and play a show with all my songwriter stuff yeah but there's there is like this stereotypical magic of theater that um you just kind of get steeped in the second that you walk in the door it's it's not like watching netflix it's not like you know streaming something it's it's the fact that it's almost gonna never be exactly the same way again after it's done um it's it's even it's even the vibe of the audience um inspiring you to perhaps discover something in your character that you would have never considered and then having having that that those witnesses in front of you kind of discover that with you is wonderful i'd like to think that uh one day when once we're in a in a post-covid world that Mm -hmm. we'll just have even more of an appreciation for you know live events and live theater because it's just like because now that because now that it was taken away from us, you know what I mean. We can just our appreciation and our gratitude for it can only deepen. You know. I hope so. Like, uh, I think so. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we're lucky here in Vermont. We've we've done a few outdoor kind of. Yeah. It, it's not the same, but. Yeah. I mean, at least at least my my actor friends have gotten some sort of outlet. Yep, that's um, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's something like it's it's tough to kind of. Like, you know, it's weird. Um, I, like, one of the reasons why I was kind of, like, already kind of reticent about opening up fast or, or like, having a bit of a, I guess, like, um, a reduced open up is that yeah. I was looking forward to the, like, almost countdown sort of, like, all right, in, in 10 seconds, we'll be we'll be good to go and, like, right. and, like, this <laughs> insane epic sort of, like, everyone high kind of, that's what I was, I'm looking for is, like, that post COVID world of like, Mm -hmm. let's not, let's not take this for granted. Um, Specifically, what roles did you play when you, when you, when you read Bishops? Oh, uh, how many, how many productions were you involved in? Too many. I was always that girl who was like, what's the show? Don't care. Going to be in it. Nice. (laughs) Um, Well, that's that's the best attitude to have. The only, I only was not in one production and it was Oliver Twist. Every other production I was present in, in some kind of way, either, yeah. you know, the, they, were, they divided the, the production one to like two things sometimes. What was it? I was uh, at least in one of them. You know, I was always doing something per semester. Yeah. That was the goal. Yeah. Or else I would feel as though I'm missing out and not so growing as much as I could. But that's the best attitude to have. And it's like, I hope so. I mean, it's, it was, it was so much fun. Like I, yeah. But like, what, uh, what, any plays that I might know of? Um, I suppose it depends what, what y'all were shown. Um, I was Ariel in Chimes of Freedom. Okay. Um, that was, that, that might be a little bit before your time. I don't know what, what they showed you guys via video. Uh, but, um, well, I, I saw like frames of Cinderella. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that <laughs> for for Cinderella, I I I did a few roles, um, but I was one of the I was kind of like the uh, the king's subject or the the king's messenger with Chris Blades. Yeah, oh, um, nice. So that was fun, and I was a cat, and I, I got to do a lot of fun things um, during yeah. that one. I was also Mary Bennett in Pride and Prejudice. Okay, that one yeah. was one of yeah. my favorites too. Yeah, so so you were there. Uh, remind me the years again. Yes. So I went there from, I graduated 2011. Yeah. Um, so I think I was there. Like 2000... 2006. Oh, wow. Five. five. Wait, what? 2005 to 2000. No, 2006. Pardon me. 2006. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Victory left. Five years. Do you want to, do you want to know uh, what grade I was in in 2006? Oh. <laughs> What grade were you in, youngin? I was what's known as secondary three, which oh. is grade nine. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. But, oh my god! But I feel like we're the, I. I mean, I hope you take this uh, the right way. I feel like we're. I feel like we're the same age. Yeah. You know what I mean, like 
yeah. there's no difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't feel as though you're, you're, you know, immature or something. And I don't feel like, <laughs> I, feel, I don't feel like you're this, you know, old. <laughs> old cougar. This old sort of lady that used to be there back in the day. Oh. Um, oh, this is okay. Now, as a young lady, or probably as a child, what was the moment that led you to uh, discover that music and, and theater and acting were, was the life for you? That's a really good question. Um, well, my parents signed me up for piano when I was mm. four. So it was always kind of part of me. Wow. Um, whatever stage I was in, like the rebellious, I'm not practicing stage or like the, oh, I kind of like this stage or the, oh, I want to like play my own stuff now kind of stage. So that's cool. That's always been consistently with me. Um, as far as theater goes, uh, I wasn't really, I wasn't really let, um, to be in things at the beginning, mostly because they wanted to, me to focus on my grades, um, my parents. Um, so I actually... The first time I felt, I've, I always enjoyed being on stage, just like performing my music. Um, yeah. But I always wanted, I always felt as though I had really good facial expressions and I always wanted to emote to be a face. This is something you discovered while you were playing music? N well, or just kind of. No, yeah. just like a person as a person. Okay. Like I always, like my parents know this too, that I'd make faces um, uh, just with everything. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, like if, if I had a bad day at school, I could not conceal, you know, like coming home. My, 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 mother, would, my mother would know just because of my face. Um, <laughs> so other than her maternal instincts. But um, so I, I kind of auditioned, I auditioned for a, a high school musical uh, named um, Chicago uh, without yeah. my parents' consent. <laughs> Nice. And um, I got a role and then I was like, oh crap, now I have to tell my parents. Uh, so I like went over to the drama director and I was like, um, just to let you know. <laughs> so this is what it is. And she well, was like, oh, well, we want you to be in the show. So I'll have to give them a call. And I was like, yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and it's what a Chicagoian way to get into the musical Chicago. You know what I mean? Hey, hey. she had it coming. <laughs> That's a great musical. That is, I mean, I, yeah. I've only, it's only my, my memories of the movie, but uh, we're, now was that experience something that really kind of sealed the deal for like the love of theater? I think my first moment completely was watching at the Royal Alexander Theater, I believe, in Toronto. Yep. Is that, yeah. Um, I think so, yeah. Was Beauty and the Beast. Mm. My dad took me to see Beauty and the Beast and... I was enthralled and obsessed and I was like, oh my, this is amazing. Yeah. And then the beast turned into a human right in front of my eyes and I was like, what is this witchcraft? Oh, wow. And I was, I was absolutely blown away. I was, nice. I just like walked out and I was like reading the, the playbill 5,000 times. Yeah. And yeah, I think that, that moment like kind of implanted the seed. And yeah, I was totally. like, theater's freaking cool. And, and how old were you when that happened? Um, I think I was in about, fourth grade okay or grade yeah. four. Oh, that's pretty young actually wow. yeah yeah no it was like lasting impression shit yeah that's a pretty young age to i feel like that's like your description was feels like it's like almost like typical sort of like a teenage girl kind of experience of but oh. this is like a child being like yes yes and yeah. it's funny because i even remember strangely enough there was this one song that was put in the the show called I, I i think it's called like i'll sing you stories or something but i remembered that specific that wasn't in the movie i remembered that song didn't really have access to like the show tunes but then i i think like the christmas beauty and the beast came out and that song was in there and oh. i had this like emotional reaction to it i like remembered it and I was like, because <gasps> it was the in the song. music. It was in the musical that you heard live. You yes. remembered it from the show, and then it wasn't in the yes. movie. And you you noticed yeah. it wasn't in the movie. Um, it wasn't in the movie, but yeah. then the sequel to Beauty and the Beast, it yeah. was there. Right. And I was like, wait, this is the song that I really really liked. Oh yeah. my gosh, this is the song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
it's strange how memory works it is yeah. it is strange and it's funny that like why did that specific song song speak to you was it just because you thought it was it was just catchy or um i the melody is really beautiful yeah. Um, yeah. um but i think it also was this potent moment in the play where i think bell like kind of starts being okay with like who beast is as a person instead yeah. of a beast Right. So I think it was like a pivotal moment and I was like, wow, character now if, arc. <laughs> now, okay. Cool. Now, yeah. Now, if you don't mind, uh, this, if this is too personal for you, I mean, feel free to, to say next or question or whatever. Okay. How did this relate to like you growing up as a uh, child? And like, you know I mean, like, like, could you make a link between um, sort of like your artistic and creative expression and uh, what you were consuming with, could you make a link between that and you growing up into a young lady? Like, did you have like a, a like, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Okay. Uh, and this, this, you don't have to go that route, but like sure. one of my examples is that uh, watching uh, Christina Aguilera, like the, like both Dirty and Genie in a Bottle, those video, those music videos yeah. were, I really feel like they uh, they were like my sexual awakening. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So yeah, and I don't blame you for it. Those were some, <laughs> those were some fucking those were some music videos. Yeah, they really were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as that goes, there's no real like. I mean, I suppose because we're talking about sexual awakening for you, there's no real sexual awakening for me and the beast. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe that's why that's why I asked the question because it feels like it could have. You mean like you could have felt like you had a bellion moment and been like, oh, like now I now I get it. You know what I mean? But that didn't really happen for you. <laughs> um, well, I think I think there's there's like a concept that is pretty topical in life that I do keep returning to is that like, um, and I think a lot of I think a lot of people can can kind of relate is the fact that like your outward appearance is different from what you can bring to the table, from who you are. You know, it mm. might have created you into something specific yeah. via other people, but I mean, you still have certain freedoms and you still have your personality, you still have wit, you still have your brain, you still have talents, you still have skills um, yeah. that make you so much more than what is just like your face. Um, so wait, but wait, are you, so yeah. Did you relate more to Belle or the Beast? <laughs> in, in... Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I think I've always kind of been like, I don't want to like say- I'm assuming Belle. Well, what? not really, because uh, no, like, I mean, when I was in fourth grade, I certainly wasn't like, I was like a little girl. I was like, I'm an ugly little girl. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> right. And like, you know, like I wasn't like, seeing myself as a fully fledged woman um, okay so i think that that concept was maybe a little bit more on a base level of of like not everybody is who they are yeah on the outside as they are on the inside you know True. like i i remember um you know people meeting people with like perhaps severe dis disabilities yep. um or or people who have impairments with with sight or or something like that you know yep. things that are frustrating to them that might make us be like whoa wow, chill out yeah. you're you know like i don't yeah, understand yeah. this it, it doesn't mean that there isn't this whole scope of their human character that for sure you know isn't there just because they're frustrated in the moment or acting out a certain way that we don't comprehend yeah 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 well Okay, and this might, probably is going to be my last Beauty and the Beast question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to milk this while, while I still can. Did you, so with that being said, did you have this um, idea of like, did you apply the Beast logic to even to boys you would meet, you know, I mean, as, as a teen or tween or whatever, where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, maybe on the outside, he kind of looks like a beast or whatever, but on the inside, maybe he's, a, he's an amazing person. Is that, a, is that an, an idea that became a theme for you? I think you've given me some kind of realization, perhaps, actually. Nice. No one's ever said it like that before, but it's, 
That is not untrue at all. Um, I've always kind of been an, a down to earth gal to begin with, though, as far as like outward appearances. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, I've always like fit into kind of the scope of of like not the prettiest, not the ugliest kind of like scraping on whatever kind of disappearing because of that. Yeah. At yeah. least that's how I feel. Who knows? I don't Sure. Whatever. Um, but at least that's how I felt. So yeah, I, I think there's a little bit of like, you know, dating people who are kind of outside the, the realm of like handsome, like stereotypically handsome or like mainstream handsome. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely see where, that. Did you even have the thing where you kind of uh, ignore slash perhaps even resent the classically handsome guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which, I don't which know how I'm, to deal with, I don't know how to interact with them because they're actually, they might be the beast in the end. That's true. <laughs> that, it, Cause isn't the beast actually super hot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, the, he's like oh, a hunk. You in know the what's, 90s, that's what they'd say. Yeah. God damn it. Even, you know what they should have done? Have what? him be just like a really pudgy average guy. <laughs> Just like super average. <laughs> <laughs> like she's like expecting him to be this sort of like oh like I don't know I actually don't really know the plot of you dad know, bod so, just like just pure dad bod solid she's, dude though solid dude <laughs> solid dude she's expecting like oh once you get shed away this beast form you'll your hot true self will appear and it's just it's just this fucking yo what up super short. <laughs> Hey, doing? hairy feet you know like whatever yeah he's, he's, he just came from being a beast what do you expect i know right Jeez, hasn't shaved in quite some time <laughs> give him a break oh lord <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i like the um isn't there the, the villain character in there like the the sort of like french uh like, oh gaston the gaston yeah yeah yeah, that on but, yeah stage was great was it was that that on stage, him and LeFou, that dynamic. Ugh. It was cool. Wonderful. Yeah, nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Maybe I should watch the movie. Watch yeah. Them. The new one is pretty good. The old one has got, I think the old one is wonderful within its like musical scope more than the new one. Perhaps I'm biased against dramatic autotune. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah, they're yeah. definitely different movies. Though, okay. All sure. right. I'll think about it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. did you have any did you have any things you wanted you wanted to address right now or that we might not have you know what I mean like is there anything you want to talk about oh any uh, rant you know what really grinds my gears kind of <laughs> yeah uh, I don't I, I didn't bring anything to the table I'm sorry yeah, well, actually you know what, what you're reminding me maybe, maybe I should uh, I should pre uh, ask I should ask my, my guest that before the interview, <laughs> you know, what I mean? just to give you a bit of leeway <laughs> instead of putting you on the spot and, and shoving a camera in your Ooh, face. I don't know. But uh, that's fine. All right. Well, I will keep going. I've got a few a few safety questions here. Sure, sure. That actually, I've already asked one or two. But uh, okay, actually, how do you? So how do you feel juggling your work and your? You mean like I guess your passion slash hobbies or whatever? How do you? how do you feel juggling those? And would you say that you feel content in that, in your current work-life balance? Well, I started really not having that option as much. Um, I was kind of trying to save up some money to pay back my loans at the yeah. beginning there. Um, so gigs were the only thing I was doing. Theater wasn't yeah. really as much of a possibility just due to my, my work schedule. But eventually I was able to kind of sacrifice um, and work part time and use my piano skills to become a teacher as well. So I was kind mm. of juggling that. Um, uh, so that would allow me to do like rehearsal schedules from like six to 10 um, yeah. uh, after work and stuff. Um, and, and that lasted for quite some time. Um, but I mean, there were a few jobs that didn't really, didn't really jive. And I knew that we're going to be like short term kind of resume builders. Uh, oh yeah. But finally, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think everybody knows that one. Oh, you know? for sure. Um, let's just find something so I can eat today. That That's right. Wonderful. Um, but finally, I feel um, with this recent admin job that I have with a law firm, I'm able to kind of at least discuss things, bring things to the table, um, and oh, cool. they respect um, actually everybody in the office's exterior lives to a certain regard enough to allow certain things, you know, with right. enough with enough context and enough um, yeah. warning. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, that's cool. honestly, that sounds like a pretty, like a really decent day job. You know what I mean? Like if it allowed, yeah. like, and you feel like you have a voice there and mm -hmm. that's, I think, is it, I think, you know, maybe the issue that so many people have with their day jobs is that they, they just feel like they don't, their voices don't really matter that their role there is just kind of like ex extremely expendable. And maybe that's yeah. why it's such an issue. Cause like, of course, the hindsight is 2020 and we always like the grass is always greener, but like, now that I've been uh, in, in, in my apartment alone for the past, whatever, eight, nine months, mm -hmm. like maybe again, maybe this is uh, not seeing it fully, but like, I miss the idea of like a, uh, an office and like other people there and just, you know what I mean? Like showing up to yeah. an area where there's other humans and you can, there's an, a right. feeling of collaboration and I don't know. Yeah. Working on a team. Yeah, Absolutely. Working. There, yeah. there is that aspect. And, and actually we just kind of moved to home homework as well. Mm. So do um, you do both or, or do you, are you mostly at home? For me, I, I'm mostly at home. Um, but there are three days of the week that I need to do like things like, uh, do mail, um, you know, yep. like physical things that like, yep. are harder to do. And perhaps if lockdown gets more intense, then I can, you know, get things shipped directly to my house. Yeah. But, um, we don't really want to do that quite yet. Uh, yeah. So there's like trips to the office. I see like one or two people a day, super low risk. Um, everybody's fairly cautious here in Vermont to a yeah. certain extent. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and so so you what did because I know that was like a debate. It's like the you know is is everybody like the fact that everyone's working at home is that's like a like at first everyone was like oh that's great like you know I'll get to just hang out in my pajamas but then it's like right. there's like a flip side to that and you feel yeah. like yeah yeah I mean that's what happened pretty good yeah yeah I mean three days a week going in you know and that and that's like a, for a few hours um is a decent amount of socializing that I don't feel like a complete shut in yeah at least so far yeah. the last time I stayed at home the whole time um mm. And it was a little bit difficult. Um, it, it was, I mean, it got to the point where I think even though I like prepared myself mentally, there was certain like aspects of like the day never really beginning or ending. Totally. And it was like this amorphous blob uh, of a quarantine God. that like, just like, yeah. 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 No. And then I was like, no, I need to take a shower every morning, or else yeah. I will go insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, did you try like fully making your own schedule? And I, and I asked this because I, I'm trying that, and it's like, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I think I kind of, I enjoy having a framework being provided for me, and it's like, okay, show up to this area this at this time, and where because if I don't have that it's like it's fully on me to create my own schedule and then I don't respect it then I feel guilty about not respecting it and it's just it's weird right um yeah the schedule is definitely there it's not too much different than what I'd be setting for myself at the office anyways other than mm. like perhaps a random person telling me to to help them out with something um yeah but I mean, I, I am lucky in the fact that I don't work for a corporation, so I can still talk to someone and be like, hey, I'm having an issue with this specifically, and they'll support me, or mm. hey, I need more time to do this, and right. they'll support me or help me, or, you know, like there's that kind of, yeah. I, I, think, I think the reason why I have that is because of the fact that I'm working for a small business that is, you know, still small. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I see what you mean. Like, it, it, you feel like if you were part of like a, this huge corporation, that you would just essentially be kind of a number and yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. And I've worked yeah. for those jobs. I think yeah. everybody has. Yeah. Yeah. You're and just, so you're working like entrepreneur. Like, what are what are you doing? I'm. I am right now. I'm a 
uh, a full member of the uh, the what's called the CERB, the the PCU. What? So okay, so, <laughs> so uh, you guys have the stimulus package, right? Oh uh, yes. Whatever. Yeah, I guess now it's like I don't think it's. It was like it happened once or twice, or it happened once. Really? Unless you were on furlough or or you got an unemployed. The government basically tossed you $1,200 and was like, yeah, that'll do you for four months, right? Holy shit, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, that's like, it. ours came out, um, yeah, I think early April. And honestly, like, I'm very proud of our, of our government, honestly, for handling the pandemic because without what they did, I would be fully fucked and i consider myself very lucky like my expenses are not that much like my my rent is pretty dirt cheap and i get to like like i live alone in my own place you know what i mean yeah but without that uh it was what's called the cerb which is gotcha. essentially it was so it was basically like basically like a thousand bucks a, a month uh is it a month or yeah for a month and from like april to i think uh august or something and then now it just rolled out a new a new program that's similar it's going to be ongoing until september 2021 but it's like you have like six months out of that so you have to kind of be strategic but it's it's a godsend so i'm i'm really uh yeah like you mentioned like that's a nice way to put it like entrepreneur or whatever <laughs> unemployed entrepreneur is is Dang. a decent way to put it um but I've, I've had i've been having so much free time and it's like trying to you know i was trying to write comedy and then it's like i had this podcast idea so i just wanted to it's like now is the fucking time you know yeah yeah absolutely but uh, okay. in terms of like employment yeah i don't know i mean I, i'm not really sure what's going to go down but it's mm -hmm. it's strange how it kind of like i feel when the pandemic happened it was a lot of things were already put into place for me to be able to do this now so i think it's it's like i i do feel optimistic and hopeful about uh, this this sort of period even though it's like uncertain uh down the line but i don't know yeah maybe it's the eternal optimist in me well keep on doing that optimist shit are you are I you think optimistic? a lot of people uh, that depends on the day oh yeah yeah that's fair but i mean i think a lot of people are drawn to optimists in certain regards because there's such bullshit around you know like yeah. there's such yeah. sometimes you just gotta unplug and like tune into something yeah that's true yeah no mm. i mean when that, and when that optimism is like rooted in some sense of like re reality as opposed to like complete uh snake oil sort of like yeah you know that i think that i think hopefully people can hold on to and yeah. uh make it out well i think we're ra oh yeah this is one of the last questions i kind of wanted to ask you and this might feel like sure. a this you you might feel like you're a tour guide and I hope you don't feel bad about this, but it's just, uh, this might be useful because it kind of like gives hope for travel one day. Yeah. Uh, what are the must sees slash must do's of Burlington and or Vermont? Let's see. Well, there are so many things. If you're a snowboarder or a skier, then certainly Stowe, hit that up, Bolton. Um, if you are not a skier or a snowboarder, there are plenty of things to do on Church Street, which I talked about as far as, shopping goes um mm. and chilling and listening to music there's a lot of cool buskers um a lot of people actually toured um a few streets and and got got famous via, via no, that church nice. street which is weird um yeah so there's lots of music venues around here that are really actually hidden gems um i i won't say any of them uh because it won't be hidden gems anymore Yes, and and also I'm worried about them because of COVID, and I oh. I don't want to jinx it. Um, but yeah, everything local. Just ask a local person. If you don't want to do like less touristy things, you can always do a hike on Mount Mansfield to clear mm. your brain. Um, actually, you can do that even without with COVID happening. Um, right. Uh, let's see what else. There's always the lake, Lake Champlain. Oh yeah. Lake Champlain. Of um, course. Just a down the road there and um let's see what else i guess i guess like going to the local bars you'll you'll meet some some weird local people Perfect. who can can tell you more yeah love it i love mm -hmm. it well thank you so much uh i think this pretty much wraps it up did you have I, again well actually anything to plug anything that i can plug for you oh yes well 
hopefully soon I will be on the podcast a Christmas special with Joe Diaco um, nice. and a few other boys from from bishops as well um, hit that up uh, it's called the quarter rest podcast um, and uh, I've I've had my own uh, my own little podcast with him as well beforehand which you can check out on Spotify um, and coming soon eventually there will be some kind of streaming um, streaming show because I'll get I'll get frustrated with life via COVID. So, so you're gonna you're you're gonna do a, a show where you you yeah you're gonna basically essentially set up. Oh, there you go. So uh, that's so this play. is the view. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So this is the this is you're pretty you're pretty much set up for the show right now, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Pretty much. Pretty much. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I by the way, I heard your um your Prince cover. And I love oh. it. I didn't really nice. know. I don't really know Prince, and I and I want to get to know Prince a bit more. And, and I really felt felt like it was. It was a nice uh, introduction. I should listen to it again. Do it. That funky cat is great. Yeah, but I meant, but I meant your cover. Like, I'm, I, oh, your thank cover you. was, was beautiful. <laughs> thank you. So I just wanted to let you know. Uh, well, again, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for having for me. My pleasure.